You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob, and we are so grateful that you're hanging with us today for this episode, which is number 980. And uh, we'd love to hear from you at AskDroneU.com if you have a question. Get them in. We love hearing from you guys. Also greatly appreciate those reviews you keep writing on iTunes, uh, Stitcher, and Spotify. It really helps us out. If the show has helped you out, please leave us a review. But Rob, I have to say, as our podcast studio has kind of changed up, and as we're ramping up to completely renovate the office into a new training center, I can't help but think that uh, I should be talking like Anchorman because I now have a 50-inch <laughs> screen of my face in front of me. Let's go for it. No, it's okay. It's okay. Um, but let's go ahead and get right into today's question, which is brought to you by our friends at Colorado Drone Chargers. If you need to charge multiple Phantom batteries, Inspire 2, Matrice 200, Matrice 210, or Mavic 2, you've got to check out coloradodronechargers.com. Why? Because no one likes to watch and wait for your batteries to charge one after the other. True. After the other. Agreed. After the other. <laughs> you want to charge them all at one time. That's why you got to go to coloradodronechargers.com. I forget our discount code with them. I want to say it's drone you eight. Mm. Try drone you eight. If not, let me know. <laughs> Sorry. No, we'll figure it out. <laughs> Here's the question. Hi, my name is Chris Juliana. I'm a professional land surveyor out here in Colorado, and I am very seriously considering purchasing a Matrice 210 RTK system to produce survey grade deliverables. My question is this. What is the best software to obtain survey grade data taking into consideration both ease of use and accuracy, drone deploy or PIX4D? I look forward to your answer. Thank you. Thank you very much for the question. We do appreciate it. AskDroneU.com for your question. And you like this question because of where he's starting with it. The basis is he understands you've got to get good data or the mapping process is pointless. Well, he he actually he asked the question, how do you acquire highly precise data for surveying? Which is really interesting because for me that's saying how do you fly and capture data because whether you open up drone deploy or whether you open up Pix4D, which if you're watching on iTunes, you can now see both apps open on the screen and our pretty faces below it. Um, and you can see here, and, and you know, I always got to check up, Rob, and use these, some of these applications again just to see, you know, how they're being used. In fact, I really want to go fly with structure mode on in drone deploy to see exactly what it's doing. But this just goes to show that no matter what application that you use, you need to know the formula for acquiring not only accurate data, but you also need to know the formula for acquiring good 3D data. And then you need to know how to merge those data sets together so you can have great structural data, facade data, and a very accurate bare earth model. Now, that being said, it's funny because, you know, I opened up Drone Deploy and I got to say one thing that they really do well, and I think that this is the key to most successful um, businesses, whether it's online or software or SaaS, is customer service. You open up the app and it shows you exactly how to create a mission. It shows you exactly how to create things and it's made for convenience. It is made to make things very easy. Now, let me ask you something. If I wanted a car that was very easy to drive and not very difficult, what kind of car would you buy? Just off the top of your head, I'm not going for a particular car. Is there, t if you wanted a, a car, type of car, like an automatic? Just a kind of car that is going to be stupid easy to drive. A Honda Civic automatic. Perfect. Now, can your Honda Civic automatic showcase the different engine modes, the different ride heights, and the different pressure in the uh, coilovers in your suspension? No. Okay. 
<laughs> now, <laughs> if I wanted to have a really highly precise car that I could literally see where I was taking the apex of the turn, I probably wouldn't want to be driving a Honda Civic, huh? I would get a Jaguar F-Type. <laughs> <laughs> where you can adjust the ride height. <laughs> That's what I want. <laughs> My point is, is that if you want something easy and you want something simple because you just want to go out there and you want to know how to quote-unquote drone map, then go use Drone Deploy. But if you want to learn how to create a successful business, you need to know the formula to acquire data in any type of environment. So that way you can acquire results in any type of environment. You need to know the formulas for mission acquisition. And it's funny because even though Drone Deploy had this beautiful tour of their app, they did not give you any information whatsoever on how to get highly accurate, quote unquote, imagery from these applications. Now, something that's even more interesting that actually just hit me like a ton of bricks, um, well, two things. Number one, when it comes to the Matrice M210 V2, I'm pretty sure you have to use the Ground Station Pro or the DJI Pilot app to fly it and map it. Second of all, you have to use the DJI Time Sync app, which actually takes the metadata from the RTK and matches it with the images and then outputs that image. I have not seen that work on an M210. I'm sure it does. There have been features, and the Matrice series is notorious for this, there have been features that have not been available quite yet. I'm not sure if the M210 V2 RTK is going to have the RTK data written via time sync to the images. They, it says it can do it. I have not seen it. That doesn't mean it does not work or it does work. It just means that I cannot sit here and say definitively one works over the other. But the second point is, um, I don't know if you can use Pix4D or Drone Deploy when you're using the M210 RTK. Because hmm. whenever you're using a P4 RTK, you have to use DJI Ground Station, and they just opened up the SDK so people like Pix4D can go in there and create an app. But going back to it, hmm. if I want to acquire the most accurate data from my maps, long and the short of it is you need to know acquisition. I think this is why, from my sources, I've heard that less people are going to Pix4D classes and more people are coming to our classes simply because we're teaching people acquisition. I, it's so funny, too, because when I went to school in Europe, Rob, I love European schools for one very, very simple reason. You would learn something in the classroom, you would go outside, and for the rest of the day, you would experience what you just learned. You would Which go out- Which is where the majority of the learning actually happens. Agreed. I mean, clearly, I think everybody would agree with that. And that's what we do here at Drone U. Yeah. But it's ironic, though, because Pix40 is a European country and they don't do this. So, irony. Anyway, I know that wasn't in a, a bombshell by any means whatsoever, but it is interesting to me because people want to learn how to fly around. They need to learn what free flight mode is. They need to know the magical formula for circular data. They need to know what double grids versus grids are. Um, and then again, like the thing is, is that if you want to create a successful business, Rob, you've got to know these different acquisition strategies. You've got to know, going back to it just one more time, you've got to know, like Polygon, Double Grid, Circular, Free Flight Mode. Why would you want to use those in what situation and whatnot? Actually, so that's why DroneU has this great thing. Let's see if I can find it. Thanks for attending a DroneU mapping class. Nope. So these are all the documents that we give out during trainings. Um, they're not really available for online members. They're only given out at trainings. And as you can see here from this beautiful guide, it shows you all the different acquisition strategies. Oh, don't want to get to the bottom of that. It shows you all the different acquisition strategies mm -hmm. for drone mapping. It's like a field guide, literally. So we give out a lot of documents. We help people acquire data because there's no formula in the tutorial. There's no formula that says, as I'm looking on screen here, Rob, it says, you know, I want to go to a flight altitude of 100 feet. That resolution is 0.4 inches per pixel. Okay, but it doesn't tell you what flight altitude, why is that important? I mean, this is literally like, it's, they're trying to dumb things down. So why is flight altitude important, Rob? Um, I don't know, resolution? Well, obviously it's... Resolution, but what do we call that in mapping? 
GST? That is right. Ground sampling <laughs> distance. Ground sampling distance is uh, essentially the distance between the center of two pixels normalized for real world dimensions. So it essentially says between the middle of this pixel and the middle of this pixel, you're going to get, in this case, 0.4 inches. So the ground sampling distance is the overall resolution of the map. Your accuracy, whether it is absolute or relative, is going to be a uh, multiplier of the ground sampling distance. But here's the thing. In both these applications, it's not going to tell you the formula for ground sampling distance, which again, you need to learn in a class. Ground sampling distance is a factor of three things. Sensor size, focal length, altitude. Okay. Also, it doesn't tell you on drone deploy that if you want the ground sampling distance to maintain the same ground sampling distance over the entirety of the flight, you're probably going to need a terrain awareness function, but that's not available there. I can go down the rabbit hole on why you need to fundamentally understand the building blocks of mapping so that you can create a business where you can map in any situation. You can map whether there's high vegetation, low vegetation. You know what to do with your GCPs and your MTPs to output a good DXF file to then go into AutoCAD and draw your brake lines. Like there's so much information. So, 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 so much information. And so you're suggesting that that can only be done in pix 4 d at least comparing those two. I'm just saying that if the, Pix4D doesn't give you a magical formula either. In fact, I'm going to take a screenshot of this and send it to myself um, so that I can put it on screen. But here's the thing is that there is there's no, the apps are not going to tell you the magical formula. You have to know that ground sampling distance is essentially, um, it's the resolution of your map. And your ground sampling distance is going to be the basis of your accuracies as a whole. So it's going back. This is the next screen that Pix4D shows. Um, if you, Again, if you're listening, you can watch this all on YouTube. On the left-hand side, we have our altitude, but it also showcases our ground sampling distance. In Drone Deploy, they just tell you resolution. It's I not see. actually the resolution of the image or the map. Your ground sampling distance is that. I gotcha. Okay. Seriously, because... Drone Deploy telling you that there's a resolution. This actually kind of gets under my skin, so I'm going to just mention this really fast. Um, the fact that, okay, so ground sampling distance, resolution. If I want to create an ortho mosaic, like I have an ortho on my computer, it's 11,000 pixels by 7,000 pixels. 11,000 times 7,000. And we get 77 million. So it's a 77 megapixel image, okay? That tells me jack dog doo-doo about the ortho mosaic. Okay. The ground sampling distance is going to tell me if I blow up the image, I'm going to get down to four tenths of an inch. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not really resolution. So that's what I'm saying is like everyone's getting fooled by drone deploy, but those people are also not going to be successful in their business. And we're already seeing the, the drop off. Hmm. They're getting maps. They're getting like jobs because they're out there talking to people, building relationships saying, Hey, I can do drone mapping. I can do all this. But the quality of their data isn't probably going to be the best for the growth kind of, of this industry. Kind of depends on what they want to do with it, though, right? I mean, if they're doing measurements and so forth, then no. But just 3D models and so forth, it probably is fine. True. It probably is fine. But also, there is another factor to getting highly accurate, good data. Do you know what it is? Highly accurate, good data. No, but tell us. I don't know what's it's on It's all about mind. the weather. Oh, right, right. And a lot of people are not really familiar with that. Here, we'll, we'll show this on, the, uh, on screen. This isn't actually public yet, but you'll be able to see it. This is a good model. This is also a perfect example, Rob, of what it means. Oh, man, I didn't delete the power lines out of this one. Of what it means to know acquisition. Do you see all these trees right here in the, in the bottom right corner? Sure. Well, how do we get all this data on the bottom of the wall that's right there? Right? How do we get all of that data? How do we know where the bottom of the building reaches the ground? Hmm. It's all about your acquisition. And if I showed you the acquisition plan for this particular image data set, you would see the almost a nadir camera position along the walls. Because even though it's completely like surrounded by trees, we are able to get all of that data. So essentially for each project, you have to come up with a specific plan given the circumstances of that project? Pretty much, yes. Not every single I'm, time, but pretty much every time. Well, and I mean, there's a framework, but you've got to not just do a monkey see, monkey do. You've got to evaluate that framework for each project. True. Now, here's one more great lesson. I'm oh, glad it grass looks great. 
I actually am glad I pulled up this model because this is a really good example because the question asker asks, I want to acquire really good data. Okay, so I was having a huge problem. You see this wall back here? Mm -hmm. Again, if you are just listening, you want to check this video out on YouTube, um, which is going to be how to acquire the most accurate data for drone mapping. So why do you think the trees right here are a different color? Why do you think it's lighter? Now, I do have great detail because I can see down in here yeah. in this little, you know. See the bricks even. Yeah, the little reserve pond. As you can also see the doorway and entrance is really jacked here. Mm -hmm. But I was able to at least gather all of this data and decent tree data because I increased the exposure on the camera. But do you see how on this image data set, it literally took the exposure up on the building and yeah. the parking lot? <laughs> like, <laughs> so this is why <laughs> you want to make sure that all your images are captured in the same uh, camera mm -hmm. settings. Otherwise, you're going to have these bands of light going, right. going across your model. Um, you can even see that there was actually a car parked right there. See? So you're seeing a shadow essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you can change that ghosting. But again, here's another great lesson in mapping. Do you see the size of that arrow point? Mm -hmm. And do you see the size of the drone U landing pad? Do. Yeah. You can see how much easier it is to discern the ground control point on the landing pad because yep. it's so much bigger. For sure. And this, was that there? Ground control point? Is that why no, that's No, we put out both. Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah, okay. because we wanted to show them how to use traditional surveying equipment to mark GCPs and how to use arrow points, PPK. And that's why they wanted to buy your set of landing pads. That's why the landing pads are still there. <laughs> By the way, we should probably send that invoice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We should. You better take the money for selling my personal landing pads, Rob. <laughs> Autographed. I didn't autograph them. I know. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't auto <laughs> Me too. autograph them. <laughs> you too. Um, I think we answered that question really well, and I'm really enjoying this new production setup because I can show people things that we're talking about. Yeah, I hope it doesn't become uh, awkward for just the listeners, but um, certainly if you get a chance, go to YouTube, and if you're interested in the subject matter, obviously go there and check it out because you're going to get more detail. True, true. All right, guys. Well, that is going to do it for us today. Thanks again for listening. Please leave us a review. Please share the show somewhere. We greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate it. Really quick, the it is Drone U8 for Colorado Drone Chargers. It is Drone U8. Drone U8. Got a bank on that memory. Yep. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you for watching another episode of Ask Drone U. Drone U.